Okay, hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. In the last episode, I had, uh, completed, uh, Gobi's Valley. And we need to finish up stuff in, uh, two more levels. Now, no sled. Here's the rules. Run through the red sled limb gates and try to beat me to the end. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Now, you probably think he's cheating, but we got the super fast boots that we unlocked in Gobi's Valley. Which is the next level, I guess you could say be unlocked in the next level but uh yeah with with them we can do this portion of the game now you guys are probably wondering why i went to Gobi's valley and did that after these levels and came back to these levels mainly um the stuff you get in these levels you get moves in these levels too you get the the waiting boots and the uh the beak bomb attack which you use both of those in Gobi's valley so in a, in a way it doesn't matter which order you take it's not going to work either of them, and you're gonna have to go back at some point. It's actually better to go this way that I went, because you get all the musical notes that way. So I'm just doing this basically the fast way for LP constraints. Now I always lose that one for sure, but okay. Oh, I've lost again. Take my other medal, I'm off to look for my kid's presence. Okay, he said dough, and I was I was this close to doing a Homer Simpson joke. I was just like, nah, fuck it, I'm not in the mood. I'm not in Homer Simpson mood. Eat that joke. And I will uh, just cut ahead as I. No, oh, I don't know what to do. I'll just do it next up. No, I can't do it next up. So I'll do it before the next level because it doesn't really matter. We don't need the jiggy right now. I mean, it's not going to help us in any kind of way. So I'm just gonna go back later, like much later in the LP, and do uh, bu Bubble Gloop Swamp and finish that up. Because Bubble Gloop Swamp, I don't really feel like cutting. There's no real levels or anything to keep track of the time with in game. So it would just be a pain in the ass to do. And I just don't really want to cut anything out. It's not good to cut stuff out. So uh, yeah, save ourselves some time here. Plus, I'm sure. Nah, I'm sure you guys wouldn't really want to. Yeah, if you're playing along with this, you probably don't want to go to, like, a million levels at once in the moment, either. Now, uh, let's go up here. If you remember correctly, we have enough notes to open this now. We just got more, way more than enough. That's 600. That's crazy. Let's go in here and check this out. It's a nice little level here. Nice little area. Now, uh, up there, you see a bunch of rooms we can't get to. Um, later in the, and later in the, well, not really the level, later in the game, we're going to raise the water level in this room and a couple other rooms to get to another level, which right here is a level, so you can see it. And you guys, if, if anyone who's played this game knows what this level is by heart, simply because they hated this level so much. And if you never made it this far, uh, or never played this game before, uh, just take a second to assume what this level, what kind of level this would be. This is one thing with this game is they chose themes for levels that have never been done before, like you know Donkey Kong 64, just by the same company. It's, it's general stuff: jungles, water levels, haunted houses. This game has gone out there. It's got like a sewer level, a uh, mountain level has been done, uh, beach level has been done, desert level has been done, Christmas levels never been done, but I'm sure a snow level has. In other words, it's not going with the average methods of level making. If you guys haven't noticed that yet, for some reason, the swamp level is pretty pretty random too. But uh, this game, this, this next level, this, not this next level. This next level is a haunted level. It's pretty average. But the level after this next level is just really far out there. It's like really, really weird idea for a level. Watch out for that fish, the piranha. Or the, it's like an angler fish almost, without the without the uh, the horn. Someone in the comments below, tell me what kind of fish that's supposed to be, or what it reminds you of at least. I know it's not an angler because the teeth are too small and it doesn't have the light, the glowy thingy in his head. Me! It says me on the thing. Or it says any. Like New England or some shit. I don't know. Like the like the maze on there says something like me or some shit. And it's like this little like curvy uh, line. Like it's like, oh, yes, me. Or some shit. I don't know. Let's uh, move on the game and find the exit. It's down there. 
Yeah, they're a pain in the ass, this game is trying to find the exit of this room. I understand what they're getting at doing this room, but... I love how, like, Pinnacle has this thing to recognize when seeing. Like, it's Pinnacle was just the program I used to record. And obviously, Dazzle what I use. Because my, my system, my, my, my tool of recording. Uh, Pinnacle, anyways, is. Pinnacle and the Dazzle, they actually come as, like, a two pack thing. And, uh. Well, anyways, when you get them, uh, Pinnacle is mainly made with alongside the Dazzle to record movies and burn them on the discs. I don't know why you would do that, but. I'm, I'm sure you guys find your reasons. I just really see no point behind that. I mean, if your friend wants to see your movie or whatever, you can just, like, um, borrow it or whatever. But I see where they're getting at. Anyways, um, but yeah. And it's, ma it's mainly made for movie recording, which I would never do. I don't see why anyone usually would. It's not exactly something I normally do. I mean, anyways, um, but, uh, yeah, so it, it can recognize scene changes by the rapid change of color. Or a fade to black, and uh, like whenever the the room changes, it actually splits it as a scene change. As a change, I think it's really cool. I don't know why I think it's really cool. This is now before we start this level, I'm gonna break this door down here, and you're gonna notice we can't do anything in there yet. But you're gonna want that down, and you're gonna find more gates like that in the level. Mad Monster Mansion. <laughs> Just a like, point here. Okay, okay, okay. Watch me go into this door. Just watch how close the window is to the door. Right, these two guests are rather dumb. Let's make sure they're unwelcome. Anyways, look how close the door is. And you can see. Also, I'm just going to do it later. You step up the floorboards, you'll wake that guy up, and it'll just not let you have the jiggy. Now, this window, you think it's going to lead to the same room. Nope. 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 Game logic. Banjo-Kazooie logic. Well, I see where they're getting at. I wouldn't want to program a big ma mansion either into a game. I hurt myself with the fire animation. The torch, the little animated torch in the wall hurt me. Banjo Kazooie, ladies and gentlemen. Banjo is the only redneck behind this game. I'll climb up the mountain. The mansion. The mountain. I'll climb the mountain mansion. Actually, that's like that's like every person in Minecraft. Like, that's the second best to building a dirt house. Is a is a mansion in a mountain. Although I don't see where I don't see what's wrong with that, because mansions are cool, and I really like I, like I always thought like if you had a mansion, you'd hide it behind something. I don't know why. Like you either like make it look really shitty on the outside, or you put it in like a mountain or some shit, or you put it in like your house's basement. One of them three things. I don't know why. I just thought it's always a really good idea. So I guess like a mine like Minecraft, the way crappy players build their mansions is got to be one of the most accurate representations of a mansion in Minecraftian history. Minecraftian. Minecraftian. I like I like how that sounds. Oh my god. Oh my god. Shut up internet. I don't care. Kill this ghost here. I'll show you guys he's a killable enemy real quick. That's how you kill him. It's the only way you can kill him. Don't argue! And shut the hell up, Hamachi. I don't care. Right now, at least. Also, I want to know real quick, what does 1881 count mean? They also said 1881 on him. That's not- that's, Don't tell me that's the year they opened their doors, Rare opened their doors. If video games existed in 1881, let alone technology, I know it's still a very new thing. That one doesn't break. That one you have to stop and swap to break open, and I never broke that in this system. So I thought, oh, it's a waste of time. Oh, 
<laughs> and now let's go up this. It's a weird sound for climbing a freaking uh, metal pipe. They use it in Clicker's Cavern too when you climb the ladder. It's a weird sound effect. See, you know you know a game well when you recognize all of its sound effects and where they appear in the game. And, you know, how, how periodically those sound effects appear. If you think knowing all the enemies by name and knowing all the levels by name and where all the hidden items are at is something like crazy? Hell no, I know where the freaking sound effects happen at in this game. I also know that this room is pointless at the moment. We'll come back later. I think the other room is toilet pointless too. Now right here has become one of my is, is one of my favorite characters in the whole Banjo Kazooie series. He appears in all the other games too. We can kill him. Oh, you're in his mouth. Ugh, there's too much fat to fit in Logo's mouth. I'm a toilet. Yeah, Logo is like my favorite toilet. Like, like favorite toilet. He's my favorite toilet for sure. But uh, there's only one toilet that tops Logo. That's my own toilets. But no, seriously, Logo is like my favorite character because like it's just hilarious. He's always being moved around by Grunty. He's Grunty's toilet. Which I have to admit, it's, it's, like being Gruntilda's toilet has got to be one of the worst roles in Banjo Kazooie history. Because you know she's like a fat chick, and like they even make jokes about it. It's like look, they look how like like look at this like look at his textures, and like look at how cracked up he is, like because he's had a fat ass sitting on him all these years. And I just think it's hilarious. I think it's like something like Rare did. I think it's always silly. And that's that. There, some gold feather. Some eggs in the bed. Don't know what's up with that shit. Is that possibly an innuendo? Jinjo up there. Gruntilda keeps a Jinjo on top of her bed. No. Just no. Also, I want to see this mansion in Minecraft now. You guys, you guys aren't getting a break. You Minecrafters, you aren't getting a break until this is done. Jinjo up here. Also, this looks like a pipe. Uh, I'll explain later in a second why that, why that pipe in the building there. Like... I like this is structural. It looks like something you can go through with the transformation in this level. And there's a lot of theories that you could. I moon jumped up there. You can't do shit with it. See, it's one of the things I did. Mainly the reason I wanted the moon jump in this game so badly was because I wanted to figure out about some of the theories behind this game with the programming and all that. And you find out a lot of things about a game when you moon jump into like all of its spots you're not supposed to be able to get into. Kind of like in Mario 64, when you drop, you figure out how the game is programmed. But like this game, I mean, this game, you moon jump, you literally figure out exactly how the programming works in this game. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know how game code or anything like that works, but I can tell what what a pro, like what in, what human approach they've taken at it. Also, oh, I did it without getting burnt. Okay. I got burnt trying first, but like you usually have to commit suicide. I got suicide, but you have to risk a health to get it. Grunty's gold, how it's shown. She'll be mad now it's gone. Yes, I'm mad. My boot out puts up your used to spooky butts. The fat ghost. That's like my main. That's like my main note. What kind of ghost is he? He's a fat ghost. Look like, look like those three ghosts from Casper. What kind of ghosts are there? There's, there's the there's the leader dude. Um, there's that one weirder one, and there's the fat guy. Doesn't even matter if he's like fat or not. He's the fat ghost.
Well, that was everything in that mansion there for now. We will go back as a transformation, which is a challenge to do because it's a secret way you gotta get up there. You don't just, like, jump in there like you do most of the levels. That's another, that's another thing to start implementing into the game is, uh, weird methods of getting into things. Like, levels and stuff. And, at first it's, like, really cool, but then it starts to get a pain in the ass. To get into certain rooms, you have to get into a lot, but... Like, for example, one room that I'm not going to do with this very second. This is like a hedge maze back here. This is this is actually a really cool level. I, I think this is uh, this, this right here is Rare's high point of level of level design. Like yeah, we we've, we've all seen the spooky level, but this is how it should be done right here. This is the spooky level done right. Till this point, till this one point, I'll get to it in a sec here. Some these musical notes. Um, comments below. Please tell me what you hear when I do this. Uh, this is a big conspiracy with the Banjo Kazooie series. They never fixed it, even in the remake. Um, let's tell me what you hear. Tell me what you guys hear. Thank you. I, 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 um, you probably heard a thank you or wahoo. Um, it's, it's it should be thank you. Let's do that again real quick. Let's, let's see here what it sounds like. Did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? No? Did you guys not hear that? That, 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 uh... Let's do it again. Thank you. If you didn't hear it yet. If you didn't hear it yet, you're really stupid. But yes, this is why N64 games should not have voice chips. This is why they never allowed them at first. It's because the... The, the things would say fuck you in the game. Also, I'm still a lot of programming flowers come out when you shoot the egg in them. One of these days, I just want to like, be like contact rare, be like, hey guys, I have to do this and this and this and this. Just flying at me. Ha! I don't know how I did that. I just like rolled into it. Also, this window here, this is a pointless room. There's nothing important in here. But it helps to go in here. See a bunch of shit in extra lives without any actual work. It basically fills your stuff up. And it's the Banjo Kazooie window, which is the one you can go through. These are just pointless windows, with really shitty designs on them. I'll go in there in a sec. Actually, I want to do this first here. How you do this is you get on top of this tombstone here. I don't know if this is the right way, but this is how I've always done it. Yeah, that's one of the things I hate in the game. Why is this microphone like, kicking it in my mouth? It's like, it's a microphone in my mouth, microphone. Anyways, um... One of the things I never liked when I play a game is when, like... It's like, am I doing this right, man? Like... Like, you open a door or something like that, and you don't even know if you press the button the right way, or... Like, it's, it just feels wrong to me. Like, if I jumped, like, I really, like, parkoured myself up there. Like, if I actually got up there the right way. It's really a big thing with adventure maps in Minecraft. Nope. Just Chuck Testa. Like this. This seems wrong. Let's think about it. I feel like you should just fly right up here. I'm sure there is a flying pad somewhere in this level, but it doesn't matter. This level is so freaking cool. Like, just the design of it. It's a really cool design for a level. Is this one... Does this... It looks like a little bit of a cross, I guess. Oh well. That'd be cool to do something like that. I love how everyone, like, in NCT 4 times, all took the same approach at 3D games. Like, I see why they chose open worlds over levels. Simply because an open world is... I don't know why I went in there. Why'd I go in there? Why'd I even go up here? But, uh, I see why I took the approach in open world levels. But, like... 
I don't know, I just feel like there should be more N64 games to focus on levels, just normal levels, like Kirby 64 did. Not that it's like a better approach, it's just an approach that I like just as much as this one. I don't know what kind of sound chimes make. And we've made it. In the next episode, I will go into the haunted church of death, doom, destruction, and tacos. See you then.